I thought it would be fun to revisit something that I did a long, long, long time ago on this channel. There are so many bonkers laws that exist in Ireland or have existed. And today I want to give you a top 10 of the most bizarre ones that I've come across. It actually isn't that long ago, but is it just me or does that look like a bajillion years ago? It could be all the plastic surgery. Don't I wish. Yes, Ireland is very old and therefore we have many, many outdated laws and some laws which we just haven't gotten rid of yet. And today we're going to look at some of those laws and laugh or go, oh my god, that's insane. Before I get into the video, do be sure to subscribe. Otherwise, the next time you find yourself going to the cinema, you're going to get stuck beside somebody who eats really loudly and you won't be able to focus on the film. You'll just be able to focus on their chewing and oh... That's annoying. So subscribe. Coming in at number 10, sticking with that cinema idea, did you know in Northern Ireland it is illegal to go to the cinema on a Sunday? It's still illegal and this law actually came in pretty recently in 1991. That's not that old at all. Why am I so fixated on how long ago things are today? The Sunday being a Sabbath, they decided to enforce a law whereby people could not go to the cinema on the Sabbath because they were meant to be at home saying their prayers. Like good religious people. And to this day that law is still actually in place although I'd never heard of anybody being prosecuted. I couldn't find any notes of anybody ever being prosecuted. And you can, of course, buy tickets to the cinema on a Sunday in Northern Ireland. So that should probably get gone soon. But religion has affected cinema going in Ireland for a really long time and in a major way. If you've ever seen the movie Cinema Paradiso, which is obviously Italian, there's a very similar thing that happened here in Ireland, whereby priests dictated exactly what the Irish public could see on their cinema screens. And that was until really recently. No! Films like Dusk Till Dawn, A Clockwork Orange and even Gone with the Wind were completely banned from the Irish public. And one that'll really surprise you is the film Fantasia. I remember hearing that that was banned when I was a kid and I was like, because oh, I watched it and oh, it was so illegal. I'm a criminal. Before a film went out to the Irish public, a priest would sit down in the cinema and go through it, marking on his page exactly what he thought needed to be cut out. Scenes featuring any kind of physical affection were almost always cut out and that included just having an elf smooch. In more recent years we have an official film board which goes through and reviews what is and isn't appropriate for audiences but moreover it will give a rating on the film and then you can decide for yourself but in its first years in practice it was definitely affected by the dynasty of the priesthood and banned Samantha Mumba's Girl Eats Boy. Gosh what a hard-hitting film that was I remember no I don't I don't remember it at all nobody saw it or if they did they blocked it from their memory. The next weird Irish law is porridge and potatoes were exclusively reserved for the poor and if you're a posh person and caught eating them, you could go to prison. This law was actually in place until 2015 and if you were caught snacking on a packet of Tejo and somebody determined you to be a rich person, well, technically they could lock you up, but they probably didn't. But it's one of those laws. That's what happens with crazy Irish laws and laws in general sometimes. Not really enforced, but still technically existing. Obviously this whole thing stemmed from the potato famine whereby poorer people were restricted to what they had access to. And so therefore if a household had access to things like potatoes and cheap goods, they should be given to the lower classes of the household. I want some American food, damn it, I want French fries. If Fat Fry was caught snacking on them, well, there was more of a chance he'd get lynched by his own servants than go to jail, but still, you wouldn't take that risk. Actually being lynched would probably be worse than going to jail, but yeah. The irony is when this law got abolished in 2015, a brand new diet came in called the peasant diet. And it was not dissimilar to the Mediterranean diet. It featured snacking upon these things like potatoes and crisps, high carb things, high in saturated fats. You could also still have things like milk and butter. Great diet to me. It turns out this diet is actually really good for your heart as it can reduce inflammation. Who knew? The next one is one a lot of tourists who visited Ireland are familiar with because if you ever walk through Trinity, it's one they always bring up. Tell me something I don't know. Trinity Trinity College is the best college in Ireland and yes I am biased because I went there in your face UCD people to be fair UCD is a very good college but I didn't go there but a lot of people know in Trinity College you are obliged to walk through carrying your sword to this day although carrying a weapon in Ireland is legal so I don't know how that works out a lesser known one is that if you are carrying your sword you're entitled to request a glass of wine during your exam now then I wish I had tried that one I think that would have been a fat lot of good to be honest because I tried something progressive when I went to Trinity which was that when I graduated I said I didn't want to wear my cap because they only make females wear the cap which symbolizes that a woman has reached the highest academic peak oh, Lord. <laughs> And is isn't actually true in this day and age so I refuse to wear it and there's a whole hoopla but in the end I didn't wear it so 
feminism. Coming in at number seven, you cannot legally insult somebody's religion in Ireland. Now, I'd always assumed that was something you can't do, but I'd always thought it was kind of like an American thing, like you can't be racist, and you can't insult people, but as it turns out, it's way more technical than that in Ireland. This act was only brought in in 2009, and the main features of the act state that libel and slander cease to be so described and are now collectively called defamation. The offer of an apology shall not be construed as an ambition of liability. You can't prove anything. Oh, I don't need to prove it. Now here's the interesting part. This only applied to insulting somebody about their Christianity. It was also totally at odds with Ireland's constitutional guarantee of religious equality. And so not only did you have proponents of freedom of speech, but you also had people arguing that it was against equality of religion. And so this act was amended in 2019. That's just like a wee while ago. So now you totally can insult somebody's religion if you want to, because that's legal. So screw you. Oh, I don't really want to. The next funny old law in Ireland is that witchcraft is totally illegal. Well, it was until very recently. In 2006, this was abolished because it was never enforced. But to this day, people in Ireland are really, really strange when it comes to the occult. I'm talking particularly about my parents' kind of generation. Any mention of Ouija boards or Wicca, it kind of gives them the heebie-jeebies. I remember I was obsessed with Buffy and one of the characters on Buffy called Willow. I'm Willow Rosenberg. <laughs> Willow. Funny name. <sighs> She was a witch and I got kind of into it and then I got kind of scared away from it by my teachers and stuff. Cause that whole shtick sort of still hangs over us today. But technically speaking, since 2006, you can go ahead and be a witch. But a generation of Irish people are going to look at you be suspiciously. There's a couple of really, really old laws I wanted to bring into this and they are Breton laws, but at the same time, I found it very interesting cause they were surprisingly progressive in a lot of cases. One such law is that on the 1st of February, a husband and wife could walk away from their marriage. This is an interesting one because until very recently in Ireland, you could not get divorced without a great deal of difficulty and having to wait like, I think it was four years. We're breaking up. Major final breakup. Back in yonder day, around the 17th century, you could just call it quits. Only on the 1st of February though. And on a leap year, which is at the end of February, a woman could propose to a man. That's not a legal thing, it was just a superstition. What is it about February in Ireland? I don't know. It seems like a good time of year to walk away from marriage though. You've just gotten over the January blues and you're kind of ready for a new year, new you kind of thing. The next one, I have to be a little careful because there are certain words you can't say on YouTube without getting demonetized. So until very recently, if you wanted to put a full stop at the end of your living. Voluntarily, I might add. This was considered illegal. And if you tried to put a full stop at the end of your living, you could be hung for that. Which is actually kind of ironic because you're sort of giving the person what they were trying to do in the first place. Being able to punish somebody by putting a full stop at the end of their living was abolished in 1990. The last person to be executed in Ireland was 25 year old Michael Manning, who, oh, here's another word you can't say on YouTube. Without consent, did the worst thing you can do to a woman. A nurse called Catherine Cooper, he went to her work and he did that awful thing that people do. And then I listen to charades. He, her. And he did it outside of the hospital that she worked in. And for that, I think maybe we should be able to put a full stop at the end of people's lives when they do bad things, but that's just me. Because I can think of worse things I'd like to do to that person. The next one was a law that was brought in for old people, because a lot of times old people get forgotten. So this is quite a nice law, really. When you become old, your family have to bring you one oat cake a day and at least one container of sour milk. Now, if all you're bringing your old fella is a sour milk, you're probably a pretty terrible person. But it was the least that they could do. Also, your family were required to bathe you every 20th night and wash your head every single Saturday. Just on a Saturday, because your head got smelly. And 17 sticks of firewood must be on you at all times. I assume they mean if they're burning, that's okay too. But yeah, a legal requirement to look after older people is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Anyway, it's gone now. So there's that. Back to Breton law, a layman could drink six pints with his dinner, but a monk or a holy person could only have three, lest they be unable to perform. When prayer time arrives, oh God, I should have finished that sentence in its fullness, but I didn't, oh God. Basically, holy people weren't allowed to be absolutely blotto when they were performing religious ceremonies, so that was the law. But they could have a few with their old pal, but drink at a slower rate. And the number one crazy Irish law is, yeah, definitely an interesting one for the books. An Irish husband who does not return to his Irish wife's bed through listlessness must pay 
a fine. That means that you have to sleep in your marriage bed or you were subjected to a fine. Also, if your pregnant Irish wife demanded a morsel of food and you denied it to her through neglect or stinginess, you could go to jail. And that one should definitely still be enforced today, pregnant or not. If I am going through a difficult time of the month and I demand a Mars bar, I think somebody should have to bring it to me. I think that should be the law. And then, when I'm president of America, because sometimes a girl just needs chocolate and that's just a thing that happens and that should be that should be a legal requirement. There should be a service that goes around and delivers free chocolate to Irish women when they need it. Actually all women. It should be all women around the world. Chocolate should be free for them whenever they need it because of just their being a womanness. But that's just my thought. I have many thoughts, some of them more random than others. Another crazy thought I had is that I'd like to go around and break weird American laws like I did before. So let me know below in comments of any laws that you think I could break in Ireland that are in America. Obviously not murdering somebody. I can think of a few people, but I don't think that that's not the kind of weird law that we're going to try and break. A couple of shout outs to my cool patrons today. Go check out Patreon if you haven't already. It's full of a great community of people just generally being weirdos. Brian Ediger would like you all to acknowledge Singles Awareness Day on the 14th of February. Some of you might also call it Valentine's Day, but you guys are crazy. Jim Weed would like to acknowledge all the cool, crazy people who walk around in costumes for a living. I was definitely one of these people, but I'm not in this photo. I've done more weird costumes than I can think of. Fair play, Jim. And finally, Eric wants to thank everyone who's helped out with the Australian fire relief thus far. He thinks that's a very cool thing to do, and so do I. That's it for today's video. Let me know below in the comments what you think of those crazy laws, and I'll see you later in the week. Bye. Indeedy duty. I don't think I've ever said that much. But, but religion has affected the cinema in Ireland and, but, but religion, yeah, they're basically, basically holy people, basically holy people. It was not uncommon for pre, it was not uncommon in more recent, in more recent years, in more recent years we have, in more recent years, in more recent years the Irish people have, in more recent years we have an official film board which reviews and, in, in, in more recent years we have a, why can't I say the sentence?